This is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to be working on the needle bar of a Singer Model 403A. And I'm going to be showing you how to check and set the height of the needle bar and how to align it uh, properly with the hook. I'll also be showing you how to remove the a needle clamp and the needle bar if you want to clean it or check it to see if it's bent and then I will show you how to install the needle bar and put it back together and at which time you would have to set the height properly again now in the description below the video I'll put the start time for each one of those checking and setting the height remove testing the needle bar and installing setting the height of the needle bar okay so let's get started here with uh, checking the height um, I'm uh, going to recommend that you remove the arm cover it's just uh, two screws on the top and it lifts straight up uh, it's not really necessary to do that, but uh, I like to, I, I just like to do that when working on the machine. And I'm also going to recommend, though it's not required, that you remove the nose. Um, and that's basically why I take the arm cover off is to get the nose cover off, because to me that that weak point of these little hinges I don't want anything to happen to it while I'm working on the needle bar so I'm just going to lift it up a little bit tilt out the bottom lift up the top and remove that so now we got a clear shot at this uh, needle bar here uh, let's see if I can get it up here a little bit more maybe yeah and uh, the way to test the needle bar, oh wait, on this needle bar and many other Singer needle bars, there's two uh, timing marks that are etched uh, right into the needle bar. with the needle bar all the way up you can barely see them here so let me let me show you uh, a close-up a better picture of these marks they're called timing marks and uh, the upper band or mark is to be used when you set the height of the needle bar and the lower one is uh, used when you position the needle bar for setting the timing of the needle to the hook. Let's take a look at a better picture of this. Okay, so how we're going to do this now is you rotate the hand wheel towards the front of the machine and you get the needle bar at the lowest position. You can look at the needle bar connecting link to see when it's all the way down or you can look at the needle bar or the needle clamp whatever you can you know is a good focal point for you to be sure that the needle bar is in the lowest position okay and when it is in that position um, that upper timing mark is going to be parallel should be parallel with the bottom of this silver bushing in the nose here is is a metal steel cylinder bushing that this needle bar glides up and down through okay and at the bottom of it you'll be able to see the bottom of it it's silver and you want to see the top timing mark parallel right with the bottom of that bushing 
you want to be able to see it but get as close as you can to the bushing while still seeing it okay and that's going to give you the, the correct height of the needle bar let's see if I can get a picture showing you up close how that looks now if you if you check that and that top uh, timing mark or height mark is where it should be that tells you your needle bar is at the correct height okay now the other thing that you want to check for is is it aligned properly so that the eye of the needle will be facing towards the front of the machine you don't you don't want this needle bar twisted and the needle clamp uh, twisted in any way so that your your needle is misaligned because the little loop comes out thread loop comes out the back of the needle and the hook has to grab it and if if that loop is off to the side or either way that the, it's going to be too soon or too late for the hook to get it now there's two ways to do that. I'm going to show you the kind of what's considered the shortcut for, for doing that. <laughs> and that is just if you have a good um, eyesight <laughs> and, and uh, a sense of alignment, you can get dead end on the end of the machine here. And what you want to see is, say for example, the front of this square uh, needle clamp, is it lined up with this line that you can see between the slide plate and the uh, throat plate or needle plate? So that gives you a nice good reference right there of a straight line. And can you tell if this line of the needle clamp is lined up with that? That would tell you it was proper. Now some people can just, you know, get back like this and try and line their eye up right with this. Uh, screw that holds the needle clamp so that they can kind of see both sides of the needle clamp the flat back edge and the flat front edge and they can see yeah that that those are equal so you feel like my needle clamp is lined up all right ta-da there you go you're done <laughs> now the question becomes what what if the needle bar was not at the correct height? And that's what we're going to take a look at next. If you determine that the height of your needle bar is uh, incorrect, here's how you correct it. Okay. Um, this piece that you're seeing right here is called the needle bar connecting link. It goes back into some linkage for the thread take up lever which connects to the counterweight in the back and that's what drives that mechanism and that link as the counterweight goes around the link goes up and down and that's what's pushing the needle bar down and pulling it back up. Okay, On the side of that link on the right side of it here there is a set screw that clamps the needle bar into the link and by loosening that set screw you can move the needle bar up and down to get your height correct when you loosen this not only will you be adjusting the height but you have to adjust the line up of the needle 
bar and the needle clamp to align the needle. And when we do it this time, I'm going to show you the, the factory recommended way to line this needle bar, needle clamp up. But first, we're going to raise the, uh, because the set screw is on the side, we need to raise this up to, to, to be able to get a screwdriver in here. I don't have uh, any kind of a tool that can, that can get into this little space and loosen that set screw. So, I'll raise it all the way up and I'll get a screwdriver with a tip here and we'll go in and we'll loosen that um, screw. Now these kind of screws can be stuck. I often get emails from people, hey, it, you know, I can't, I can't loosen it, or I loosened it and the needle bar still won't come out. <laughs> and that's usually a buildup of, uh, of, of kind of varnished oil that's kind of glued it in there, or somebody's over tightened it quite a bit. But just go in first and just see if you can uh, turn it to the left there a few turns to release the clamping on the needle bar. If you can't turn it, don't damage the screw. This is where you would want to use some uh, penetrating oil like a WD-40 or other. You can also take a hair dryer and heat that up. It's all steel and this is aluminum and the paint's kind of baked on so you can you can get a hair dryer in here and heat it up and trying to expand stuff and loosen it. Um, I've had people just put like a cotton ball soaked with alcohol and leave it on there for a while. Just trying to, to be able to loosen the screw enough. And again, even when the screw is very loose, the needle bar does not always move. It can be kind of stuck in there from all the oiling. So the way that I see if it will move is just to gently hold the uh, thumb screw on the needle clamp and just try and turn it a little bit. I don't want to force anything. I don't want to bend the thumb screw or, you know, force it. I'm just going to... There, see, it's, it's moving. See how that's moving back and forth there? Okay. So I'm going to wiggle it and push it down a little bit. There we go. And I can wiggle it and I can push it back up. So that's how I, I loosen it so I can adjust the height. Once I see that the, that the needle bar now is loose and can be manipulated like this, what I want to do is, is bring my connecting link up as high as it'll go. And then uh, I'm just going to kind of eyeball this, get it in the general area of that timing mark. And I usually just line up the screw for the needle clamp kind of with the bottom of the bushing of the presser bar kind of in that area because here's here's the thing I have to tighten this up enough that the needle bar won't slip and I can lower it back down but I have to leave it loose enough that I can manipulate the needle bar to get the right height and to get the line up right so it's a it's a tricky little spot let's let's go in here and just let me gently tighten it till I till I think it's touched the needle bar and then yeah see I can I can I can maneuver it up and down just a little bit so let's try that let's Turn the hand wheel again to bring all of this down to the low spot. Okay. And I see that my top height mark is about a quarter inch below the bushing. So my needle bar is too low. So I'm going to gently wiggle it back up 
and lean down and look in here and see that timing mark. Remember the picture? See the timing mark. Right up against the bottom of the bushing. Okay. And that's going to give me the height. Now, I'm going to show you how to uh, Singer said to, to line the needle bar up with the hook. Okay, so according to Singer, this is the method to, uh, once you have the height of your needle bar uh, set correctly, this is the method to make sure that it's turned properly in alignment with the hook. And uh, the preparation for this, uh, you're going to want to remove your presser foot and the presser foot thumb screw from the machine. And you're going to want to remove your throat plate or needle plate. So I'm going to put this in the unlock position. And the uh, take up lever almost down you can look you can look um, inside and move the hand wheel until you feel that the feed dog is at the lowest point and then you should be able to slide off the plate okay then I'm going to just raise this up a little bit to get some working room now um, they suggest removing the feed dog too. So I'm 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 going to do that which will also give you a better view of what's going to go on down here. So I'll put my little mini ratchet in here to break these screws free. These screws are kind of soft too and they're usually in there pretty solid if nobody has taken them. I see these uh, screw slots on this machine have some slight damage, which means somebody's been in here before and uh, worked on them. And it's not uh, unusual to see that, you know, on a machine of this age. See if I can get my little spring driver in here to help me get these out. It's a little tricky getting in here on these uh, uh, thumb or uh, screws for the for the feed dog. I almost called them thumb screws. I don't know why. Huh. So whatever way works good for you. Once they're loose, some people just use the little tension screwdriver, and some can get their finger in there and manipulate it. So whatever uh, works for you. I wonder if I could get a close enough view with my camera to show you the slot on on the screw. I'm afraid if I get too close it'll be blurry. But maybe you can maybe you can see they're a little stretched out or malformed. Anyway, um, with those two screws out, of course, we can lift out the feed dog, which is going to give us a much better view down here of the hook, which is what we're going to need to see, is the hook down in here. Now, um, one of the features of this machine is that it can take two needles and you can double needle sew, which is a nice feature. Now don't confuse the double needle sew with the twin needle, which has one uh, top part and comes down with a crossbar and then has two needles on the bottom. This is, uh, you actually put two needles in the machine. This machine takes a 15x1 type of needle and you can use size uh, 9, 11, 14, 16, and 18. And when you 
do this and you have your two needles, what you want is uh, two needles of the same size. Any of those sizes I mentioned, but they should both be the same size. And if I'm reading these right with my magnifying glass, they're both size 11. I happen to find so uh, these go in with the flat side back and they just go in side by side just two needles uh, up into the needle clamp side by side and just be sure you push them all the way in there all the way up okay and then you have your two needles now the idea that, that Singer is saying here for aligning this is that you uh, first you have your height proper so you're going to lower this uh, uh, needle bar to the lowest position right and then you're going to have your needle bar set so that top timing mark is just barely below the bottom of the needle bar bushing and that's that's how we set our height I showed you now the idea of this is let's see if I can get any more slack on my lamp cord here get, can I get any better light in here mm. Not really, that's kind of distracting. How about this LED? The idea with this is that these two needles should be equidistant from the hook point. So they're not going to be lined up with the hook point when you have your needle bar all the way down. Okay? Because the hook isn't there yet. You're going to turn the hand wheel towards the front of the machine to begin the up stroke of the needle bar. And as that up stroke happens, if the timing is correct, you, you will see the needle, the hook point come around counterclockwise. And you want to stop it when the hook point gets behind the two needles. Okay, so I'm turning it, I'm turning it, and there I have my hook point behind the two needles. Okay, now you're supposed to look down in there and you're supposed to see that both needles are the same distance from the hook point. And by doing that, you would know, trying to get the best light on here, you would know if your needle bar is turned properly. Like I'm going to turn it way out of position. And now the back needle is pushing hard on the hook point and the front needle closer to us isn't touching it. If I turn it the other way the 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 needle facing us here is touching the point of the is touching the point of the hook and the back needle is pointing away so it's it's kind of like this right and and if you look at the um, just trying to see if I can get some better lighting in here. Yeah, still, if you look at at this uh, needle clamp, I mean it's easy to me to see it's not lined up. So I'm going to eyeball it as close as I can using my shortcut eyeball method. And then you've got to look down in there and see if the 
uh, two needles are e equidistant from the hook point. And it's it's not it's not easy to see. You're going to have to have a good light down in there. Um, and they don't mention using a feeler gauge or anything. They just tell you to look down in there <laughs> and, and see that when the two needles are equidistant from the hook point. And so you've got to have pretty good eyesight. You've got to have some pretty good light down there. But uh, I think you're seeing now why I use the eyeball method just up above on the needle clamp. This is more work and it's uh, fairly hard to see down in there and see the hook point. But maybe especially if you're going to double needle sew this would be more critical that it's just as exact as you can get it. Um, because the hook has to grab two threads. One thread from each needle when you double needle sew. So you don't want one needle too far away or one needle so close that the hook point is hitting it. And of course you have to have two good needles to do this. They can't be bent or anything. And be sure you use the same size, right? <laughs> so let me just... Uh, let me just... Um, reiterate here the settings okay so your needle clamp here I mean your your needle bar uh, set screw that's turned in here has to be snug enough to hold the needle bar from slipping but just a tiny bit loose so that you can manipulate the needle bar up and down and side to side and then the first thing is to turn it down as low as it will go get at the bottom of the stroke and then get down in there and look at that top timing mark and get it right up there eh, whoops too far get it right up there just below the bushing the bottom of the bushing and then come down here and turn it left or right to line up the two needles equidistant but to do that you've got to turn the hand wheel a little bit more until that hook point you see that shiny hook point there catching the light that has to be behind the two needles. Okay. And I think that's that's looking pretty um, That's looking pretty good to me. Now, now that we have all that, we have to tighten that screw. Right? We have to tighten the set screw so we don't lose all this. But we can't get a screwdriver in here. So we have to slowly raise that needle bar up by turning the hand wheel until it gets up above this little ledge and we can get a screwdriver on it. So just slowly, slowly, slowly we'll get it up as high as it will go. And then come in from the side and tighten that clamping screw, the set screw. Whoa. Okay, now we should be good. Okay, so you you can, you know, once you do that, you can put your, you can put your needle bar down all the way. You can go check your height. Whoops, you can check your height again. And then rotate a little bit more until you get your hook point behind the two needles and see that they are equidistant from the hook. Ta-da! Now, I'm going to show you a way 
a friend of mine does this. He says he's he 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 can't do the eyeball method that I use very well. He said he just for some reason he he really fight he fights with that. He can't seem to get it right. So here's what he does. He puts the the throat plate or needle plate in. Okay? And then he lowers the needle the two needles down into it and the the back side of the hole and this is the multi-purpose or zigzag needle plate with the slot obviously and the back side of it's curved but the uh, front side oh I lost my pointer Sorry, <laughs> the front side of it is straight. So he compares the distance here from the two needles from the front side of the plate. Okay, and that way he doesn't have to take the feed dog off and he doesn't have to try and see in that little space by the hook. So the way he aligns the needle bar is by aligning it with the back edge of the opening in the multi-purpose needle plate. So really, I've given you three ways to line this up. Okay, one is my eyeball method, where you just kind of get down and when you got it at the right height, you, you, you try and get dead on it and you kind of turn it like this and that and say yeah that that's straight okay then there's the singer way where you you take off your needle plate and you get it down there rotated and until the hook is behind those two needles and you check the spacing between the needle and the hook point and then my friend's way and he, he was a singer repairman for many years in Canada, is to just forget all that and to lower those two needles down in there and turn this until uh, both needles are the same distance from the front of this opening in the slot. And then he, he will go up here and raise raise it up and tighten it. So he's, he does the same thing. He loosens this enough that he can manipulate the needle bar up and down and side by side without it slipping around. And then he makes all of his settings and then raises the needle bar back up here where he can get his screwdriver to tighten it. So that's all about checking and setting the height of the needle bar and how important it is to, to line it up because you can get the height right and if this is off a little bit the the hole in the needle point is turned and that puts the loop of thread farther away maybe from the hook and the hook can miss it and you might be skipping stitches sometimes and wondering like wow I set the timing I I got the perfect height on my needle bar. Why am I still skipping every fifth or eighth stitch? So you want to check your alignment of that needle bar. In this part of the video, I'm going to show you how to take off the needle bar and uh, test it. You might take off the needle bar to test it because you think it's bent or you just want to give it a good cleaning. So uh, you're going to start with this little screw. It has a cupped washer around it and it holds on the needle clamp and the needle clamp or needle bar thread guide in the front. And it just loosens uh, Lefty Lucy. Whoops and we'll take it out 
And uh, when you when you pull it out, the um, thread guide is going to fall right off uh, with it. Just going to push back that little cup washer so I can get a hold of the screw itself. And we'll pull this off of here. And here's the little uh, thread guide made out of wire. And the little screw that holds it. And the little cup washer that covers the head of the screw so the thread does not snag on it. Then we're going to loosen this uh, uh, thumb screw a little bit and wiggle this right off. Okay. Now there's only one more screw and I bet you can guess what it is. It's going to be this uh, set screw or clamping screw that clamps the needle bar into the needle bar connecting link from the take up lever system. And it's also lefty loosey. You can uh, you can get access to it by raising the needle bar up as high as it will go. So you can get your screwdriver over that little ledge and oops, give it a good turn there. Probably at least mm, one full turn. It's a pretty shallow screw so it can easily fall out. And then uh, and just turn it and twist it a little bit. Now I'm going to try to push it. You take it right up of the t out of the top up here, out of the top bushing. And sometimes you can slip it right up through the connecting link. But sometimes there's so much gunk on it that it will get stuck in there. <clears throat> yep. That's pretty much, let's see if I can push on it. You don't want to pound this or pull it with a plier really or anything because it can damage it but all of that uh, old gunk mm, if it's too much and, and won't really come out you can clean it with some crud cutter or or alcohol first um, you know, so that you can get it up out of there. Okay. Let me show you how to test this now. Now, to, to test to see if you have a, a bent needle bar, you, need, you just need a known flat uh, surface that you can put it on. Uh, you know, this is just a, a, a ruler, but if you put it on here, and get it back lit. If you if you see a gap as you rotate it around, uh, you'll see if it's bent. If you can see light between your flat surface and the needle bar. Uh, personally, I like to use the bed of the machine I'm working on because it's uh, usually very flat. And I'll just get it up there and uh, get get some light behind it and I'll get down and look to see if I can see light right underneath there and like if I lift that up a little bit you can see it and then I'll just uh, you know look at this half from the little bit past center to the left and I'll just roll it to me and see if I uh, feel it mm, kind of wobbling, I guess is how I'd say it, or if I can see a line of light appear underneath it. And then I'll turn it around and, and do the other, you know, 60% length the other way. And this is actually a pretty good method. And I've, I've had needle bars that 
I didn't even need a light. I mean, as soon as I started rolling it like this, it would just go thump, 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 <laughs> and and you could tell. But this this one is fine. I don't feel any uh, wobbling or unevenness, and I don't see any light, you know, uh, creep creeping underneath it like that. So I'm I'm happy with it. It's good. I'm going to put it back in. And uh, by the way, if you do need to replace the needle bar, uh, you'll you'll see it when when it comes out. If you if you you may have to clean it, but you'll see a part number someplace uh, stamped into the needle bar. On this 403 model, the part number is 172033. And that is the same needle bar that's on the 401A slantomatic. So the 401A and the 403A use the same uh, needle bar. The 404 model does not. Uh, it's a heavier duty machine and also it's a straight stitch. It doesn't have uh, a vibrating bracket and it doesn't sew a zigzag. But um, if you ever have to search for a needle, you can search by the part number and you can search by the model 401A and 403. Okay. And there's uh, something else before I put it back in here. I wanted to, whoop, I wanted to show you up here. Let me get this back a little bit. Um, where this um, clamping screw or set screw sits in here. I call this the needle bar connecting link that links between the take up lever system and the needle bar. And that's what pushes the needle bar up and down because the whole system is connected to the counterbalance or crank in the back. But I want to show you this. You can, if you take the needle bar out and clean it, you can take this out and clean it too. It just pulls straight out. And uh, there's the end with the set screw, and, and it's shallow. This center part that takes the set screw um, can, is, is like a, a piece that's pushed in there. You could actually force it out if you want, but because of the um, mm, because of the zigzag, it has to it has to swing a little bit too. It's got to uh, swivel a little bit too, like you know, like that. So that little center tube is made to do that, and. Uh, there's a couple ways to tell how to know how to put it back in. You see this oil hole actually goes on the bottom. And uh, of course your set screw goes on the right as you're looking at it so that you can tighten it. But uh, sometimes the set screw you know, comes out or you take it out to clean it. And people, they're not sure when they go to put it back in and they see the oil hole and they put it in with the oil port up which puts the threads over here so if if uh, if your set screw comes out or if you take it out to clean it you'll easily see that one one side of that little tube in there has threads for the set screw and the other side is just smooth and the set screw wouldn't go in there okay so after you clean it or do do whatever you uh, you know, if you just take it out to look at it or whatever, just put a drop of oil back on it there, and then it just slides straight back in that little connecting link, like that. Okay. So, I'll I'll get ready here, and I'll show you how to reinstall or install the needle bar. When you're, when you're ready to put the needle bar back into the machine, uh, you, know, you just realize you're going to go through this top bushing. It's going to go through the needle bar connecting link. 
and it's going to go through the bottom bushing that's in here okay and then uh, don't don't forget if you move that set screw it has to be like lo loose enough to not block the needle bar okay so don't don't put it in too far or the needle bar uh, will catch on it and then uh, turn the hand wheel to line this up with the bushing see how the bu the bushing is here and the link is kind of to the side and you can turn it up high or you can turn it down low and here's what I mean you can you can line it up up high by the top bushing or you can rotate the hand wheel towards the front of the machine and you can get it down here uh, closer to the bottom bushing so it's just kind of like what what you what you like so I'm gonna go ahead and put it up here I think and I'm going to uh, I think I'll put a drop on this I clean this with a crud cutter and a nylon scrubby so it's totally degreased I think I'll just put a drop of oil on there for something to get it in there and I'll just come up to the top and start putting it down through that bushing if you want to clean the bushings with um, you know like a q-tip and some cleaner or something um, and you can clean that connecting link you can clean these with just soapy water or your favorite cleaner I mean it's steel so I'm just filling around with this uh, connecting link see if I can get the needle bar started in there I don't think my set screw is blocking it huh doesn't feel like it wants to go in so I'll just it's so easy to have that set screw fall out which wouldn't be the end of the world you know I could put it back in there uh -huh. okay if I need to get it out more okay let's go ahead and turn that down and get it down towards the bottom and whoop pushed in a little too far mm -hmm. <laughs> you won't have this much trouble with it <laughs> and, don't, and don't forget this this is a swing needle bracket so you can you can push it back too to help you line it up with stuff you know mm -hmm. see if I can get that back up here higher it seems to me I usually like it up towards the top more mm -hmm. I think when I I think when I was showing you how that works I might have twisted it out towards the front too far and I think that's why you know I had it way out like that so I'm going to twist that little center cylinder up to try and line it up better I think that's what's giving me a problem here and then I'll try this again mm -hmm. there we go yeah I think that was it now see how I'm missing the the lower the lower bushing here and that's because the spring has just pushed this out so I'll just push it back okay then I'm going to rotate this uh, there we go get that over a little bit and don't don't forget when you're going to put it in you're not at a, you know, straight up and down 180 degree angle. It's got a 9 degree tilt. <laughs> so, so it goes a little, a little slanted. Right, there we go. Okay, that's looking pretty good now. So, 
we're going to want to let's see if I can get this over here a little bit more we're going to want to put the needle clamp back on there mm -hmm. Oop, my lamp's going to fall over I think, I'm trying to get it down there too low I have the clamp itself and get the parts up here and the thumb screw and so forth um, if you haven't done this very often uh, you see here's there's a hole that goes straight through it see this hole and then over there you can you can kind, kind of see it in the slot there's another uh, the other end and then you see there's a cutout in the bar and there's a cutout down here in the bar okay so this long cutout slot goes towards the hand wheel and the end you want to be seeing from the nose is just the one with the single hole no slot mm -hmm. And then the way the clamp goes on is the square portion goes down and this rounded portion goes up. Okay. And we'll put it on there like so. And you can line up the two holes. And then you can uh, take your screw and uh, put the little cup washer over it or onto the screw I guess okay and you see when it's on all the way see how it covers the head of the screw so the so the needle thread going down to the needle doesn't get caught on that okay and then we're gonna have our wire uh, type of a thread guide and it goes on with the loop and the end of the wire pointing at you which is going to put the loop of the thread guard around on the front side of the needle and and in the front of that a needle clamp there's a like a cutout right there that that wire fits into okay so let me get this kind of assembled here and you you can see what it looks like okay and then I'm going to use my little spring screwdriver to kind of hold that all together and get it started in there. I'm not going to worry about that thread guard right now, our thread guide. I just want to get my screw started in there. And it's not going in, which means i got to line up my two holes a little bit better. There we go. Now once that gets in about halfway, now I've got I've got to get my uh, you know the the thread guide in position in that little uh, cutout slot I showed you. Okay? And then you then we'll just tighten this the rest of the way up. Okay, and then uh, lastly, I'll put the little uh, thumb screw into the needle uh, clamp here, and, and uh, that'll give me the complete assembly now of the needle bar into the machine and the needle clamp and and thread guide 
So what has to be done now since I pulled this out is two final things. I have to set the height of the needle bar uh, you know where this is going to come down and then the as low as it will go and then I'm going to take the needle bar and take the top timing mark and put it up against the bushing Mm -mm -mm. and that's going to give me the height and then I have to use uh, one of three different methods to align the needle bar and the needle clamp up with the hook so um, to see how to do that you can go back to the beginning of this video where I explained in great detail how, how to set the height and, and three different ways you can align this. Uh, you, only, you only need to align it once, but there's three different methods you can use. An eyeball method, a slot in the needle plate method, and, and with two needles, and two needles down in front of the uh, hook point. Okay? And you can go, like I said, back to the beginning of this video. And speaking of this video, <laughs> that's going to be the end of this one. Uh, all about the needle bar on a Singer Model 403A Special Slant-O-Matic. Please come back and... Uh, see me again for the next video or any of the 450 plus videos you care to see and you can subscribe if you like and you get notified when I release another video and uh, see there's oh my my daughter says to remind you to like the video because then in some metrics that that uh, YouTube uses it'll do better in a search if somebody else is looking like for a needle bar video on this machine. I don't know about that. So, But uh, as long as you come back and, and, and see me again, I'll be happy. In the meantime, take care.